Okay, I wanted to make a uh, quick video on how to interpret and read a two-tone IMD test and talk a little bit about what it is and really what it is not. And so I first want to talk a little bit about uh, if you are uh, wondering about a two-tone test, if you have an external generator or something in software, a couple key points to keep in mind uh, before you uh, try to do a test like this. Uh, the first thing to note is uh, that uh, if you're using an external two-tone uh, test generator that uh, it's important to calibrate each tone independently, tone number one and tone number two, one at a time until each tone has the same amount of output power. You could use a watt meter or any uh, instrument to do that in a oscilloscope uh, just as a relative measurement. Uh, making sure that tone number one, uh, one is uh, equal, turn it off, and then tone number two is equal, turn it off, and then combine the two tones and then feed them uh, into the transmitter. And a note on that, uh, hopefully as far up into the audio chain of the transmitter as possible so that you're not measuring the intermodulation distortion of the microphone preamp or other things inside the transmitter that uh, may not be what you're after. Uh, we used to call that the uh, balance modulator or ring modulator in uh, older sideband transmitters, for example. So just uh, a quick uh, brief uh, introduction on that. Uh, as you can see here, we do have uh, the standard two-tone being generated. Uh, this is a standard two-tone test using a 700 hertz and 1900 hertz. And you can see that the uh, bandwidth uh, that I've selected at the moment uh, is arbitrary. It's around 20 cycles to 3000 cycles. And I've also gone ahead and uh, pre-scaled the spectrum analyzer and waterfall so that we're seeing a very large amount of dynamic range and uh, everything is uh, uh, visually uh, set uh, well to interpret. So uh, let's talk about how to actually measure uh, an IMD uh, test or IMD3 as it might be referred to and how we can uh, interpret these and then I want to look at uh, white noise and see if uh, the, uh, to the test with white noise uh, matches that as it would with the two-tone uh, generator here. So we have our two tones uh, now combined. Uh, you can see that they're equal amplitude. I have the uh, spectrum analyzer uh, set uh, for a gradient of 6 dB and I did that so that uh, the chances of landing uh, on a gradient uh, are a lot better than say 10 dB where that's a bit coarse for a test like this. And you can see our peaks at 700 and 1900 are about equal and resting just at about minus eight. So to measure a two-tone IMD test for our out-of-band or, or even in-band energy, we wanna look at uh, two particular items of information. We wanna first look at the uh, the peaks here and take a measurement as you see minus 8 dB and then we want to come down to the second uh, peak that we're going to measure which you can see here is uh, it's not quite on a gradient it looks like that's around minus 36 dB just by eyeball and then what we want to do is subtract the two so we'll subtract this value from this value to get a basic IMD measurement so if we do this we'll take uh, these uh, two numbers. We'll start with the uh, uh, this uh, number first. I'll put in minus uh, 30, looks like right around uh, 36. I'll say 36 minus 8 and 36 minus 8 is 28 dB. So the delta between this peak and this peak is 28 dB. And at this particular power level, right around 40 watts or so, uh, that seems to be uh, pretty on par for most uh, uh, tests uh, in this in this category. So you can see where I have my bias set, which is very high, uh, and this particular value around 40 to 50 watts, uh, 28 dB down, is our resting IMD3 number for this particular test on this uh, amplifier. And I say amplifier, meaning the final amplifier, the LD MOS inside the transmitter, not uh, an external amplifier, which would show the same results uh, even if we do that. So uh, the next uh, thing that I'd like to do is uh, uh, incorporate um, some adaptive pre-distortion, which is a feature of feedback uh, that this particular Apache Labs and on 8000 uses. And we'll go ahead and uh, 
uh, take a sample um, from uh, externally and feed it back into the transmitter and we'll look at uh, what kind of improvements we get uh, with the two-tone test using adaptive pre-distortion and we'll go ahead and start that now. So you can see there was a pretty drastic uh, reduction in the IMD. Uh, you can see now that uh, uh, our second measurement is uh, significantly lower. Uh, looks like that's uh, right around minus 84 dB. So if we take uh, the difference now, uh, 84 dB minus 8, uh, that gives us a reduction and that's 76 dB down. So uh, uh, that's a pretty significant number. And so the uh, what did we gain? If we wanted to know well, what did we gain between uh, the two uh, the two numbers, we would subtract uh, those two together, and we can get, uh, in other words, subtract uh, this number from that number uh, to get how much of a of a reduction or an increase in IMD3 uh, that uh, that we're now seeing. So I think the first one was 28. So if I take uh, uh, what did I say? This was 76 dB. If I subtract 28 from that, we're getting an increase of uh, suppression by an additional 48 dB. And and remember that these are all negative numbers. So when, when I say we're, we're increasing IMD um, a reduction, I should say we're increasing the IMD reduction. We're not increasing IMD. Um, it's a little bit backwards from the traditional way of uh, using English. So in this test, that was an additional 48 dB, as you saw. We'll go ahead and uh, uh, kick it back out here. And you can see the standard uh, two-tone IMD test uh, as, as it uh, typically responds. Well, the next thing I'd like to do is uh, do something a little bit different. I'd like to now do a white noise uh, test. And I'll go ahead and uh, start that now. And the white noise test uh, may show some different uh, numbers. And in fact, uh, it looks a little bit different uh, just right off the bat. You can see we'll do the same thing. We could take, uh, that's uh, right around 32 dB down and right around uh, minus 70. And we'll, we'll start to develop some, num some numbers there. So if I take that uh, 30, or actually I'll take uh, the, the larger negative number first, so right around 70. 70 dB minus 32 and in this case uh, in the uh, two-tone test that was 28 dB down uh, with a white noise test looking about one kilohertz uh, off from uh, the skirt here it's showing 38 dB down so uh, again a two-tone test isn't necessarily the end-all for bandwidth measurements each kind of waveform you use will have a different set of numbers associated to it and that's why these uh, particular tests have to be uh, qualified uh, on, on what exactly it is you're trying to interpret. Uh, a two-tone IMD test or white noise uh, waveform and so on. You can see they're, they're significant, significantly different. Uh, this one's showing uh, you know, almost 10 dB better uh, from the two-tone IMD test. The bandwidth you can see again, I'm uh, holding uh, true around uh, 20 hertz to 3000, just arbitrary as I chose it and you can see uh, a large dynamic range in the waterfall uh, low scaling that's why we're able to see all this energy before it goes black uh, and just a very very large uh, swath of uh, uh, or swath of dynamic range that we're viewing here something that uh, most uh, people would never witness so uh, let's go ahead and uh, add some adaptive pre-distortion to the mix and this should be uh, an interesting uh, test we'll go ahead and see the reduction now it should be just as, as spectacular, uh, but um, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be even more so because uh, there's so much uh, uh, constant energy with white noise. And we'll go ahead and do that now. And as it uh, develops a correction, you can see all that out-of-band energy basically go uh, right into the noise. So in this case, uh, if I wanted to uh, do a measurement now, uh, I could say, well, it looks like our... Uh, our skirts are uh, right around, uh, excuse me, one, minus 116. So if I take 116 and then subtract our top number, which is right around 32 dB, you could see in this case it's 84 dB down. So our IMD reduction in this particular test of white noise uh, with adaptive pre-distortion is 84 dB, which is pretty significant. 
uh, versus uh, not running it. We're back to 38 dB. So uh, if I uh, want to know, well, how much did that get us in this particular uh, case? I'll subtract those two numbers, and we gained uh, an additional 46 dB of suppression using adaptive pre-distortion uh, from our external clean RF sampler uh, hooked back into the transmitter in this particular case. So, uh, just a few uh, ways to look at intermodulation distortion. A good example of uh, adaptive pre-distortion and a two-tone IMD test and uh, what, uh, what we can do with it to uh, look at different uh, calculated numbers. Basic math, once you know uh, what uh, measurement values to get to, uh, very, very easy and uh, somewhat revealing as well. So, hope you enjoyed that uh, test and I'll uh, go ahead and uh, maybe do a few more tests here looking at this and this is a pretty good demonstration I feel on uh, occupied bandwidth and how different waveforms can manipulate uh, the results. So with that, uh, thanks for watching. I'm Tyler, amateur radio operator, Kilo Alpha Zero, Kilo Alpha 73.